Gallagher and our latest guest. <laughs> I, I was wondering if it was Mike's headdress or what, what we yeah, were so doing this morning. It's our mystery guest it's our mystery coming guest. up. Coming up. Here we are on the 26th of September. I know, the weather's turned through. cold, windy oh. today. Yeah. Maybe tornado, tornado warnings. warnings up north, according to Sue Smith. <laughs> Sue, Smith weather, <laughs> Sue Smith's weather report. We should have her in and do like five minute weather report every We Wednesday should. Morning. I'm sure she'd, she'd be, be good. Cold. She'd be cold. Anyway. Local events. local events. Things are picking up again. Things are picking Thanks up again. Why? I know. For a while, I was like scrambling for local events. Um, the Women's Club, it's are coming up on their monthly meeting. It's Tuesday, October 9th, 1.30 p.m. They hold it at the uh, United Church. And the guest speaker for this month's meeting is Lisa Mazzi, and she'll be talking about 4-H. Oh, great. So make sure that if Yeah, you, Lisa's been posting a lot about 4-H. And, yeah, she uh, just was down Biggie at um, and, Big yeah. E and, and doing all kinds of things. So... Um, that's one thing coming up. And then um, reminding everyone that this, this September is recovery month, and there's been a lot of events going on. I know that the, um, the open mic night down at Flatiron Friday night, which was stories, some people telling like poems or sh- songs about recovery, it was packed down there. Yeah. And so um, there were like people still out on outside, the street. Outside, yeah. yeah. So there's one, there's one more event coming up. All these events have been sponsored by Greater Falls Connections. Um, this event is called Courage and Compassion, Inspiring Stories of Recovery. It's going to be this Friday. Um, it's actually here in the Greater Rock Building. It's down in the fireplace room from 12 to 1 p.m. So if you can make it, that'd be awesome. And um, we have a lot of runs coming up. Yeah, it's running. Month. It's running season. It's running recovery season. Month recovery month and running. Recovering and running. Actually, the two go well together. Yeah. Um, the first one is a front porch half marathon and eight miler. That's this weekend. Um, the start and finish is down at the Waypoint Center. So if you're out and about on Saturday morning, it would be nice to have a big crowd down at the Waypoint Center. I believe the race starts at 9 or 9.30 um, to see the runners off. And then they get back on average um, about two hours, hour and a half to two hours later. And it'd be nice to have a crowd down there cheering them in. Mm-hmm. So, and if you're driving around this weekend, you'll see lots of places posted to just be be um, aware that there's runners on the road because they run out to Saxons River. So just be aware when you're driving around this weekend. We also have the Rotary Pumpkin Run coming up, which is a unique running event. It's an obstacle course where you carry a pumpkin. Although I'm thinking, Mike, you could we carry, could carry the mushroom. We could carry this big giant mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> we might next year we'll mushroom have the mushroom run. run. <laughs> <laughs> and that's on Sunday, October 7th. That's out in Saxons River. And also in Saxons River the following weekend is the D run. That's on Saturday, October 13th. It's a little bit earlier than normal this year. That's up at the Macri's Farm up on Paradise Hill. And we'll be getting you actually more information about that because we'll be, we'll be releasing a PSA pretty soon. Okay. So um, lots of stuff coming up. Lots of stuff coming up. Uh, we're going to talk today about CDB oil, our second installment about CDB oil. I, yeah. Um, fascinating stuff. Do we want to talk about the the mushroom in the room first? <laughs> the giant <laughs> the mushroom elephant in the room. Well, I couldn't help but uh, bring this in just because it's uh, you know, such a nice specimen. So this is a, a hen of the woods mushroom or maitake. It's a, a extremely it's good edible mushroom. Um, you know, considered a delicacy. Uh, many restaurants are starting to incorporate this into their menus this time of year. Um, and also a really amazing medicinal. It's one of the most potent anti-cancer mushrooms. Really? Uh, yeah, the, um, a, a fraction of this or specific polysaccharide constituents are used as a major pharmaceutical drug with cancer patients in Japan. Um, and then, uh, that's used as a dietary supplement in the states, as well as crude extracts, so like teas or um, tinctures of this mushroom as well. So, and you found this in the woods yesterday. Yes, it grows at the base of usually large oak trees. Um, so this time of year, if you hunt around at the bases of oaks, uh, they kind of you know when you're on top of it, they kind of pop that out yeah, at you. you yeah. Know, at looking at the size and like the the tree that this was under actually had a smaller one that had been knocked over uh, really? right near it as well. Uh-huh. So sometimes you can find multiple ones under the same How tree. long does it, like has this been growing all summer or does this like? No, it, it, it comes out of the ground fairly quickly. Like uh-huh. it, depending on how much moisture we have, I've seen them as early as like the very end of August. And then the last couple of years where it's been very dry falls, they haven't even come out until 
about the first week of October. So, so this, this is like maybe a week or a couple weeks? Or a or couple something? weeks. Like yeah. it doesn't, wow. it, it can, goes from this little tiny thing that is almost unnoticeable in the leaves to this in, in days. I mean, the underground part of the mushroom, of course, is working a way to produce that. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's amazing, amazing how quickly how they really uh, pop out. And then it looks almost feathery, but Justin had me lift it before and it, it weighs Wait. 10, 15. Yeah, it's it's, wow, it's, a, it's, it's a decent weight. It's, it's a decent really weight. Yeah. Heavy. Now, is there any other is there any other mushroom that that mimics this? That looks like this. That's not a good for you mushroom. Um, there's none that are not good for you that look like this. Okay. There's there's one um, called the Berkeley's polypore that fruits earlier in the season and gets even larger, like sometimes like this big. Wow. That eager hunters of this mushroom sometimes will pick. You know because they're hoping it is, but, but that one usually is fruiting like in August mm -hmm. or even July, uh, and it's bigger and it has much meatier uh, fronds, you know, the, it, yeah, do, it these doesn't... Are, these are, they do, they appear delicate, but they're... Yeah, and, and it's, it, and yeah, so so it's not super similar, but that is the one that sometimes people will confuse, and it tends that one tends to be lighter in color. This one, though, can vary in color quite a bit, like some of them, um, you know, this one's quite dark, yeah. um, but some of them are. I know it's heavy, but can you, can you hold it up a little bit? See. Yeah, so the underside oh. is white, and then uh, the top is dark. But, th but this can be. <laughs> Fascinating. This can be um, a lighter color. Um, and, and it gets the, the name, you know, Hen of the Woods, because I guess it's, you know, looks kind of like a chicken with it its does. feathers fluffed yeah. up. Um, yeah. yeah under the oak trees. So. so you were out with Leo, walking Leo, and, and you found this. Are you training Leo to be a mushroom sniffing dog? Or? <laughs> I wish, we're not quite, we're not yeah, quite. They, I guess they Leo's can not cooperating. truffles and things like that. So you, yeah, may, and you might have him next year just going out and. Well, their noses are certainly sensitive <laughs> enough. And I know with the truffle dogs, they say they're actually better than, the, than using than the pigs, pigs yeah. because they don't have an interest in actually eating the truffles. <laughs> Unlike the pigs, who if they're we'll left to their yeah, own devices, will just munch them. So. <laughs> so what do you, that's what I'm looking, very curious about. What do you, so you, you, you have this, now what are you gonna do with it? What do you do with it? Well, uh, slice it into pieces. Give some away to start with because there's more than enough. Um, and then one of the best ways, because they're so big and you can't usually get to eat all of them fresh, is um, to dehydrate the slices. And then they, they uh, reconstitute really nicely mm -hmm. into soups and stews. They add a uh, really good... Uh, Subtle but good, like nutty kind of umami flavor. Even like a meaty quality to it something you're eating, I would think. Yeah. yeah. That's what that's what I find with mushrooms is it gives you like a meat feeling sometimes if you're not yeah, eating something yeah, with meat yeah. in it. Right, yeah. And I mean, you know, they mushrooms are more closely related to animals than to plants. So there is that kind of, you know, meatiness about them. Um, and then, you know, I'll probably some of the dried I'll make a tincture with uh, for the, the anti-cancer properties. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be extracting it in a combination of water and alcohol to get, basically the uh, constituents are these complex sugar chains that, um, the way they work on cancer is not directly killing cancer cells, but more aiding the immune system to better fight the cancer cells. Like, upregulating the the natural killer cells that go around looking for abnormal cells to to eat so um, so that's one of the cool things is that by having you know they're working on supporting the host as it were that you know supporting the strength of the person with the cancer which is an interesting approach and you've talked about that before with a lot of the um, different remedies that that unlike traditional medicine it just wants to kill the cells and kind of kills other cells too mushrooms, things like that, work to let your own body do what it's supposed to do, to support your body right. to function the way it's meant to function, to get rid of things that that aren't good for it. Right. It's an interesting And that's approach. also why like it, it can be useful and is used while someone's using chemotherapy, things that are targeted at those yeah. cells, because then this can help keep the immune system strong enough for the for the person, the patient, to be able to mm. get yeah. the chemo because you've all heard of people oh, that yeah, they get their immune system tanks and then they can't even get their tr the, right. the treatments yeah, yeah. on a schedule. And you know, if chemo is going to work, it's going to work when you get when the you right dose. Right. So yeah. this yeah. can help to support you know the immune system for, through that onslaught as well. So 
pretty amazing. It is amazing. It's just amazing the things that are out there that um, that we just don't hear about a lot in the mainstream. I mean, we're hearing more. Like you can yeah. walk into Harlow's and see um, they sell them down there, and you can you can eat them. But the the healing powers of which was which is segueing into. What I, you are like segueing. I'm, I'm healing, seeing that coming. The healing powers of simple plants, and we just overlook it. We want to take these synthetic compounds and sell them for lots and lots of money that are have made lots and lots of side effects essentially from plants back back way back, back well back back, back yeah, yeah. kind of like a you know a french fry is made from a potato but it doesn't have maybe the same <laughs> the same depends nutrient, where you get nutrient, your french fries. same nutrient density as the actual potato so yes it's yeah. kind of the same type of well medicine. and unfortunately because you know these compounds aren't patentable if they're natural products then there's not going to be money to be made, and the you know the expense of a study, you know, who's going to undertake that? It's similar to like what you see in like the exercise science realm. You know, it's like the studies have 20 people because they're not going to patent there's a new no leg money. curl or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. so there's no they money. Might. There's no money the way there is for a statin trial where they enroll 20,000 people. You know? Yeah, because right. I mean, exactly. then they're, they're going to continue to sell that. Because they're going to make yeah, 15 yeah. billion a year, yeah. you know, until their patent runs out. So. Right, but there's not, you know, there's not, no one's going to do a study on Hawthorne, yeah. which does essentially the same thing, but... Oh, right, okay. but it's, you right, you're out. not going to, right. So, I mean, it's a catch-22 in a way because it's like, you can say, oh, there's no evidence or the evidence isn't that good, and it's like, well, but who's going to, who's going to create that evidence? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. But... Segwaying into what we were really going to talk about today was yes. CDB oil, and I I got where you were coming from is that about a hundred years ago or so, they the United States government passed a law that outlawed that sked, that called hemp and marijuana an illegal substance, and I don't know why hemp originally got thrown in there because I guess the plants are so similar mm -hmm. or the plants were the at one point the same, but they basically outlawed this this plant. Well, and now, a hundred years later, everybody's like, "Oh, it's it's a good it thing, right?" And so we're getting back into this idea of looking at what hemp and marijuana can do for, for yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Well, part of I mean, there were two things. I mean, part of the hemp part being made illegal was the uh, newspaper industry and William Randolph Hearst, who had a big timber conglomerate, and hemp was a oh, competitor yeah. fiber product. For paper, oh. or to make paper, to make paper, oh. and so that so was again, it's all about money. <laughs> that was part of it, and then there was also like as far as you know, using psychoactive cannabis, there was a um, a racist component because it was mostly Mexican immigrants that were using cannabis. That was mm -hmm. where it was prevalent in the community, and notice how it was outlawed under the name marijuana, a, a, a Mexican name yeah, for it, yeah, Spanish yeah. name for it, and actually at that same time while they were working on making marijuana illegal. Hemp extracts, as in marijuana, psychoactive cannabis extracts, were prevalent in the marketplace, used therapeutically by doctors, but oh, they really? were but under the name cannabis. Yeah, Queen Victoria was a big fan of cannabis extracts oh. for pain relief and some of the things that yeah, we're yeah, seeing yeah, again. Yeah. But by the time physicians realized that their medicine cannabis was what was on the oh, chopping what? block, it was like it was too, it was late. too late. Like they oh, didn't okay. even, you know. Yeah put two and two together because it was because they of, thought it was so completely right i mean th thing. going under some the, drug they, these people were right using. this marijuana you yeah. know um that was being smoked whereas these cannabis extracts were you know more like what we would call edibles today or mm -hmm. you know tinctures things mm -hmm. like that oh interesting good good historical background it is a good historical background so here we are back in and again and, it, it came down to it came down to <laughs> not for the good of the people it or came not down for the good of health make, it came down to who could make more money yeah, which exactly. Is, which is and so scare tactics yeah. and, mm -hmm. and oppression. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like... Things don't change much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately no. you know, yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the, um, the exact medicinal purposes of CBD oil and what, you know, what would be some just simple... I know you just said you, it was helping you with sleep. Yeah, well, in the interest of full disclosure, <laughs> since last week's show, I was like, well, you know, I'm ha having difficulty sleeping. I wake, I was waking up at night, mm -hmm. you know, 
being awake for like an hour thinking about, you know, everything in the whole world. You know, your mind, <laughs> I get, wake up at two or between two and three in the morning, mind racing about a th million things. Mm -hmm. What happened in high school? <laughs> what happened at work today? You know, what Just happens? How, exactly. how does the universe work? All this stuff I'm, is going through my questions. mind. And it's like. And then I would like do things, weird things to try to get back to sleep and think about poetry I knew and just so, anything to get my mind off of all of these racing thoughts. And so I bought some CDB oil last week and after, oh, nice. after we talked and I said, I'm going to try it. So Friday I tried it and it really has, I've been using it just a little bit before I go to bed probably. I'm not sure if I'm getting it right yet, but it really has. I mean, I sleep through the night. Yeah, and isn't it cool? It makes a, a big difference. And I wake up, you know, but I can go back to sleep. I don't have these. I can just calm myself and go right not, back to you sleep. You don't get the I don't have all this. Yeah. yeah. So that's actually a good question. How do you know? We talked a little bit last week, but we can reiterate. How do you know dosage and how do you know? Well, dosage is fairly variable amongst people. So one of the recommended ways to kind of find your dose is to start at let's say 15 milligrams of CBD you know start at a base amount and then if you don't notice any effects double that mm -hmm. the next time um, and do that if you do that three or four times that's a pretty wide dose range that you, that should help you pretty quickly yeah. find mm -hmm. your amount so I mean, it sounds like you close to at least close to hit the nail on the head well, right off the bat. I mean, as far yeah, as yeah, I sort of just tasted it first and didn't have you know, it comes in with a dropper, so you, right. know, you sort of figure out where in the dropper you want to do it, and I've sort of figured that out now. I don't, t I don't know that I take it exactly. The other thing, it comes with a bottle that has. The print is so small <laughs> that I have yet to figure out how to read it. But so I watched some um, things on the internet. You know, I watched what Google did. So you went to watch Dr. Things. Google. Doctor Google, and it said, you know, did you know, do thirty drops, and then that'll do. That'll be probably an approximation of what yeah. you need. And they they were saying do it twice a day. I don't do it twice a day. I do it once a day. Yeah, I think for and, sleep yeah. that's that, yeah. that's good. And I would say typically for sleep issues, it takes a little bit more than if it's like daytime anxiety yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it definitely makes a difference. I mean, and it surprises me that it makes it because it's very subtle. It doesn't. Right. It's not like you even notice. You notice the difference in the result, but yet I didn't notice the difference in like I wake up, still wake up. Right. And, there, and there's no um, hangover type yeah, of thing. I wake up before my alarm goes day, off right? and I, I mean, feel fine. And, yeah. Which is a, a nice. And I mean, you know, sleep is such a, you know, commodity and short supply yeah, here yeah, you know right. I mean, well, it's the ultimate in supporting your immune system i mean it's kind of like it's our ultimate as reading an article the other day that we still don't even fully understand what sleep does for us oh yeah we, still no, don't, yeah. we don't really know we know all it's creatures needed. sleep we know that it's needed but we do not fully understand how important it is and i think unfortunately it we've become a society that just thinks that we can survive just without forever, sleep because yeah. we don't need it. And that's when and then we kind of get in bad sleep patterns or things happen and that's when you get the squirrel brain and you get yeah, too much yeah. you know, too much screen time before you go to sleep. And so it seems like it would be a simple solution that um, you know, can help with a lot of other things. If your if your sleep quality is good then it really just, there's ripple effects into oh, everything yeah. else. Oh, for sure. Life. And to be taking something that helps us sleep that's not addictive, that's not creating a fogginess in the morning yeah. that yeah. almost defeats the purpose of getting the sleep in the right. first place. Exactly. You know, like you're getting good quality sleep too, because that's an issue. Like, that's a, yeah, because some people, like, I know myself sometimes I'm getting my seven or eight hours of time that they recommend but i'm not getting quality i'm getting the quantity but there's not quality within that sleep right you're not getting to and the I right think, levels and, and that's think, really yeah, important that, and i think that's important i think it's also important to point out you talked about this last week that with cbd oil it's not uh, you you used a term last week it's not the psychoactive component what was the term you right used yeah, last week? yeah it's non-psychoactive non-psychoactive so there's i think there's still that kind of stigma Around it, do you think oh, that people I, still I think, think that, so. yeah. that it's 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 the medicinal people don't even component. realize it's legal? I don't think. Yeah. Oh, I think there's a ton of stigma still around yeah, cannabis, yeah. Um, psychoactive or, or and not, yeah. not because there's been this misinformation campaign since the 30s. You know, yeah. I mean that's a long time. I mean that's you know most people alive today grew up in an environment of 
Yeah. Did you ever watch Reefer the Madness? Devil's, <laughs> the Devil's Lettuce kind of thing. Yeah. Reefer's <laughs> Reefer Madness. And, uh, well, let's just ask Marty. Have you ever watched Reefer Madness? I have not. You definitely. You owe yourself. <laughs> There's so many movies that I have just. That it's I only know. a. It's, yeah, it's, it's probably really like short, what, it's like a minute 15 minutes. Minute <laughs> that movie, it's it's amazing. I, I will put it on my to-do list. We should show the a we clip. Show a clip from Next time we have it. Justin, and we'll have a clip. Well, from yeah, I mean, and so that you know that and 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 like the, some of the debate during legalization in Vermont, um, you know, brought that to light. Like yeah. you know. Well, if we legalize it, what message are we sending? And I, you know, I was speaking to someone yesterday who's like, "What message are we sending when there's alcohol available at every single gas station?" You know, <laughs> yes. and we're, we're worried about, you know, the message we're sending if marijuana is legal. You know, like a substance that causes more car accidents and mm-hmm. other issues is available right where you drive Why to solve your car. Drive. You know, where you're <laughs> gassing up your car. And you know, I think it's a valid point because you know, uh, cannabis in all forms is much safer. I mean. Uh, alcohol has what's known as a safety ratio of one to ten, where like the ten times the the recreational dose, if you will, can kill you. Whereas oh, really? most people kn- know at this point that marijuana, THC, or CBD, you know, there's no, it would be physically impossible to get enough in you yeah, to yeah. to kill you, you know, in, in the short term. That and, you could voluntarily. Take. And I would also I mean, argue that very few people have like beaten their wives while they were stoned. <laughs> Um, it's probably true. You know, I mean, it, it's you know, so there, you know, th- that is something that's going to be a much slower to change. Than, you mm-hmm. know, the laws have been slow to change, but the stigma is going to be even slower oh, yeah, to change. Yeah. I think. So, if someone are, are there brands of CBD oil? I know it's available in, in online. It's available in different places. Are there any? Brands that you have that you yeah that's a really good well there's a I mean right now there's a there, ton of brands uh, but but I you know I prefer to support Vermont businesses okay. when possible and I mean there's a lot of Vermont businesses yeah, going into it um, um, in Southern Green Vermont Mountain Grow? yeah th- yeah so this is like up north the Green Mountain Grow um, around us in Guilford there's a company uh, a farm called Tapaloo Guilds that's oh, okay. making a CBD tincture that's really nice and it's um, you know, right now, one of the things with CBD is that it's quite expensive. You know, that's mm-hmm. going to be one of the main barriers, I think. And so hopefully as there's more competition in the market yeah. um, and these operations get bigger and fewer get ripped off by people thinking it's, you know, <laughs> that's the pot, <laughs> um, you know, that, uh, you know, we can see it more accessible. Because right now it can cost, you know, I would say one to two dollars a day a lot of the products yeah you know, I, would as get, far I think as, that's accurate you yeah. know which um is fine if that's the only thing you're taking potentially or it's not you know i yeah, mean so yeah. that so that's going to be a barrier there but yeah so that tapaloo guilds uh farm i really like their products as far as like national brands there's one called charlotte's web that now that is a little it's, confusing yeah, because this is right a that's colorado the, thing right yeah. right and that's a, the same name as a medicinal strain of cannabis that also had a little THC, mostly CBD, but some THC to it, that was used for treating childhood epilepsy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the yeah. CBD is very good for neurological conditions in general. You know, it's, it's part of the, you know, in addition to the pain relief and anti-anxiety effects, it has strong anti-inflammatory effects, particularly on the nervous system. Uh, but so the Charlotte's Web CBD line is not made with the Charlotte's Web marijuana strain oh, okay it's a branding sort of taking a advantage yeah. of that notoriety yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Which merchandising is, it's probably not the wisest merchandising well, well it could be and i don't well, people I, might think well uh, this will be good for epilepsy yeah. Which it probably might be, yeah. probably will be. Um, I'm not sure how much the THC plays a role in yeah, the anti-epileptic yeah. um, properties, but um, even though it's a little disingenuous, it is a good quality. Like if someone just, you know, wants a pl- easy place to start, that's, that's a, a product that okay. you know consistently mm-hmm. works well. Because I guess that's my question: is because again we're talking about an agency that. A, a, uh, industry that maybe isn't super regulated, would there be differing concentrations and differing CBD oils? Very much that, so. Yeah, and that's, so I guess where, that's where you. So probably with each one, that's why trial and error. If yeah, you're trying, yeah, trying yeah. It, and it out. and really, you know, you want to, you know, 
build some trust with a particular company because yeah when when they've tested cbd products like you know consumer there, reports right? or some you know one of those agency you know they yeah they can you know some have more some have less cbd than they than the label claims mm -hmm. and even though cbd is what it's marketed for it's still has the other cannabinoids you know mm -hmm. not it has to by law have less than the 0.3% thc but there's 60 some odd cannabinoids and so mm -hmm. each of these products even though it's predominantly cbd it's going to have a blend of other cannabis constituents mm -hmm. in it um and then to further you know make it more difficult um last year the dea like issued this kind of um confusing uh report where they said they were going to track CBD like it was a schedule one drug mm -hmm. like they were going to track the extracts or you know the track the marketplace and I think you know I don't know that I don't think it really made any actual difference but it definitely made the industry nervous of, of like yeah you know it, it seemed like at that point a lot of the national brands changed their labeling from saying how many milligrams of CBD were in their product to just calling it straight hemp oil, yeah, and not mentioning yeah. CBD anywhere on the label, and you just kind of had to know, well, it is a CBD yeah, product. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. So that's not making anything easier, you know. No. Of course not. And do these? Uh, well, we're out of time. Out of time. Again. Again. Just when I get. But do you know if these? Uh, the, do the local growers have to then report to the FDA or to the federal government in some way that they're because they're trying to track this? I. See, that's why I don't know yeah, what it yeah, actually yeah. meant for for everybody. And, I mean, it's still, for growing it, it's still hemp in the farm bill. So it's still perfectly legal. But potentially their farms could come could be inspected at any oh, time. Interesting. Possibly. So coming up next week on the feed, and actually, actually this, will, this will maybe this will fit, this right, kind this of fit in. Um, we have, uh, there's a new naturopathic physician here in town. Her name is Johanna Ryan. Her practice is Return to Wellness Natural Medicine. It's actually in the pro building here on the Greater Rock property. And she's going to come in. She's going to introduce herself, talk a little bit about what she does, and maybe we can ask her some great some DUL questions. Sounds awesome. good. Yeah. Awesome. We'll see well, you Well, thank you, Justin. Thank you. Thanks Justin. again. And thanks thank for you. Take care. This amazing. Mushroom. Yeah. That's it. Bye. We're done. Bye. See you next week. That's it. Thanks for the feed. The feed. Be sure to catch us every Wednesdays at 7.30 a.m. Also, find us on Facebook at Fact TV. Or tell us what you think, thefeed8 at gmail.com. And don't forget to watch the feed online at www.factate.com.